Hello and welcome to The Mill. I am your host, Dusty Crane, and this week I have just a few pieces of news for you. It's kind of a slower news week, but um, Elizabeth with the rescue. I'll get to that at the tail end. Um, but let's go ahead and take care of some business first. Um, was watching the Wingspan Facebook group and saw someone ask about the neoprene mats, the double-sided ones, when those would be available again. And Joe mentioned that they were going to be in the web shop next week, which means that ship that has Rolling Realms also will be arriving, which means the Rolling Realms sale... Um, when that goes on sale, it's going to be Wednesday, October 7th, October 6th, Wednesday, October 6th. I had to check my notes here. Um, Rolling Realms is Jamie's infinitely scalable um, roll and write game that's kind of based on all the different worlds that we know from Stonemaier Games, Scythe, Viticulture, Tapestry. Um, this game over my shoulder that um, actually is celebrating one year anniversary in Pendulum this week. So um, if you get a chance, go ahead and get that to the table this week, um, you know, in honor of the first birthday. So that was the first bit of news. Rolling Realms on sale, um, the pre-launch or the pre-order beginning October 6th. So let's go ahead and before I get to Elizabeth's piece of news, since that's what you're wonder, wondering about at this point, um, the, the second one is actually a story I talked about, maybe it was last month, and I talked about how nice it was um, that Jamie had actually reached out to a Kickstarter creator that was doing a Dungeons & Dragons rap album, and their hard drive failed. A catastrophic failure unable to get the data back from it, and Jamie stepped up on behalf of Stonewire Games and said, we would like to pay for that data recovery to make this project happen. And there was an update posted to that campaign just this last week. Uh, it was actually mentioned, um, I'm just going to go ahead and read it, so I'm going to be looking over here to the side. Um, another huge, huge thank you to Jamie Stegmeyer and Stonemeyer Games for coming to the rescue and paying for the hard drive recovery. It was expensive, even compared to my estimates, and I don't know if I could have paid for it without their help. Now, being in the IT field myself, I know that data restoration is very, very expensive, um, at least my definition of very, very expensive. We're talking thousands and thousands of dollars, depending on, you know, how bad that, um, that hard drive did crash. So, um, I don't know. I, I didn't think it was appropriate for me to ask Jamie, um, exactly how much uh, they, they paid for that service. Uh, in any case, it certainly wasn't cheap and the, the campaign appreciated it. But it, what was really cool here is, um, at the end of the newsletter, he, and this is Dizzy the Bard who is running that campaign, he mentions wanting to, you know, this isn't just a rap D&D &D album, you know, this is an actual party that he runs, this is a, this is a world that him and his friends, um, you know, live in <laughs> you know i mean if you if anyone plays dungeons and dragons or any role-playing games you know how um it's almost like even though you are very much playing a game it's almost like those heroic actions take place in your head and it's like remember when we you know slayed that dragon or whatever the case may be so one of the things that was cool is as a thank you uh dizzy is thinking about writing Jamie into their greater lore of their campaign world and something like perhaps a library that was going to burn down and, and Jamie rescued it. And so he was looking for ideas. Now, I'm actually a backer of that campaign. So if you have any cool ideas that you would like to have contributed um, to that idea in how, um, you know, maybe story wise, Jamie could be involved in that story or what in your opinion, that could look like given, you know, what has happened and what has been done, feel free to drop them in the comments and I will pass them along with your name. I'm not going to take credit for your ideas. Um, and yeah, so let me go ahead and get to the third and final bit of news that I have. Um, because it was, it came out of the blue. Um, you know, I follow Elizabeth on Twitter and um, just September 30th, she said, uh, always nerve wracking when the printer is still going 15 minutes before you want to leave for a play test. Is stack and cut actually the most important game design skill? Um, her follow up post just a little while later was done with time to spare and there was some cards um, that had been chopped up or, or cut up ready for play test. 
on display and um so, you know i had it on the screen and now i'll have it over my shoulder wherever i have it over my shoulder um but i uh someone goes the question is a girl got games asks the question is what is that play test and i took a look at those cards real close you know because it's an elizabeth post i said based on the bands of those cards i'm guessing it's the next wingspan expansion Elizabeth responded, LOL, yes. I very in- And I very intentionally flipped the deck over before snapping the pick. It's not going to work, Elizabeth. We, we Wingspan fans are just, we got Hawkeyes, right? We got Hawkeyes. Um, <laughs> it's bad, man. That was bad. It's all right. It's going to stay. I'm not cutting it. Um, but then I, I went a little bit further. I zoomed way, way in, trying to figure out, even if I could figure out what the new power color is, it's very difficult. And let's go ahead and remember, too, that this is playtesting. So even if I was to very clearly identify the new color is, it could totally change between now and what ends up in our pack. But I really tried, and, and I'm going to go ahead and link to the tweets in the in the description so that you can go ahead and zoom in yourself. I'm thinking the new band is red. Now, what I don't know and what I am a little bit curious about is I remember, um, I think it was Sam Gray. I may have that name wrong, but I think he did a, a expansion, a fan-made expansion that we talked about a way ways back, um, you know, probably a year or more at this point, and it had you know bird hatching and stuff like that. But the powers in that in that game or in that ex- fan expansion were red. Now I do know that Jamie has worked with fans in the past, and he has always said that if Elizabeth wanted to work with a co-designer, that would be totally one hundred percent up to her. So. There's no, you know, way to know for sure that um, that is the case. But um, at the very least, I think I saw the color red. Now, again, it could have nothing to do with Sam at all. Um, could be totally a coincidence. But, um, you know, sometimes it isn't a coincidence. So um, the wing expansion is at least being play tested. It looks like um, a pretty good stack of cards. And so... I don't know, I'm just excited. I'm excited to get some more wingspan out there, but it, get it on the shelf, get the wingspan uh, nesting box to, to, you know, I got my expansions over there. I got some over here and just all over the place. Um, but wingspan is one of those games that is just too much fun. And um, I, I love playing with the expansions too. So it's like everything has to be readily accessible. And... Why not throw in one more bit of speculation? We got a little bit of time, right? I don't think I'm creeping up on too much wasted time here. Um, The last one was, once upon a time, Travis Wilsey, and I really apologize if I'm pronouncing it wrong, Travis, please let me know. Um, But Travis had posted a frogmouth pack of uh, wingspan cards. And, you know, Travis is a huge Wingspan fan, a huge birder, and the the Frogmouths are his favorite type of bird. And once upon a time, he was he had made an entire Frogmouth pack and was asked to at least rework them because even though they were fan-made and Jamie makes the template available, um, Travis did such a great job with them, and I think there may have been the intention to sell that Jamie had a little bit of concern about the actual um, iconography from Wingspan used on it. It was it was not that he was making his own pack. It was that it, was, it needed to clearly delineate that it was fan-made, and it could not use any official Wingspan art especially if it was going to be you know distributed and so you know travis was you know i've talked to travis on the side and and not directly about this but it did come up just in conversation and he 100 percent understands this is not a case of you know um you know big brother stepping on you know someone doing something um he he was totally on board he wanted to respect uh jamie's wishes and it was actually you know the those icons are copyright or whatever they are they're the property of stoneware games so it makes sense to go ahead and and step back and and adjust those um but he did 
you know, somebody did ask on BGG um, whether or not they could get it with, you know, without the with the new icons, if, you know, Travis actually got around to it. And, you know, he said, well, maybe I'll get around with it. But the PDFs have been pulled, which are to be expected if, you know, Jamie has to have those reworked. But they've been down for a long time. And, and Travis, you know, is still very active on stuff. So I said, there's one of two things, either, you know, either Travis is, you know, just, maybe a little bit disheartened because he wanted to do it. I don't know what the case is. If if he was a little bit disheartened, then I guess I can understand, you know, maybe taking it down and maybe needed to take a step away from it um, just for a minute. I mean, I know me personally, I, my, I, I'm just going to be honest with you. I think my feelings would be a little bit hurt um, because of all the, the time and effort that I put into it. Totally understanding. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying anything's wrong with um, him being asked to, you know, take the official iconography off the cards or anything like that. But um, I think my feelings would be a little bit hurt and I would probably need a little bit of time away from that project before approaching it again. In any case, the PDFs are down. So that was one possibility, right? That, um, that he's just taken it down and wants to step away or doesn't have time. Maybe he doesn't have time to work on it. I don't know. Um, <clears throat> the second thing, I seem to recall that Hobie, the creator of My Little Side, the co-designer with his daughter Vienna, um, had taken the PDFs down before My Little Side became an official product. So total speculation here. I know I have a little bit of background information on the stuff that Stonemaier is doing. That's not the case here. I want to 100% emphasize this is total speculation and I have no reason to believe it, but... Could we be seeing a Frogmouth pack, a mini expansion coming soon? Could it be a part of, you know, this coming expansion? I don't know. Or could it be, you know, just a, a little, our first mini pack or whatever? I know Travis did a phenomenal job with it. Um, you know, it was um, very, very, very well done. As you can imagine, it's something that he is passionate about and um, just fantastic. So before I dig myself a bigger hole. Um, I think I'm going to call it in a video. I don't want to, you know, put a bunch of filler in here, but um, yeah, that's it. Just remember that Rolling Realms is going to be on sale next week, next Wednesday, and that will be in the Stonemaier Game Shop. We also had the news of um, Jamie being, um, I guess, honored in Dizzy the Bard's uh, D and D campaign again. Any ideas you have for how Jamie might be immortalized in that world? Feel free to drop them in the comments, and I'll drop them in the comments of that campaign. And Elizabeth with the attempting to hide what playtest she had, but man, we're just we're just too focused. And then will we possibly see an official release of the Frogmouth pack? Time will tell. That is all I have for you this week. Until next time, take care of yourselves and each other. Thanks for watching. Bye.